And uh, next one is element and line beam load. So first one is element load. So there are eight eight types of load here. So I will use a trapezoidal load uh, case here, and and you can see the value and the relative and absolute. So it, these mean the the method to define the location of load. So relative means the using the ratio of lengths, and the absolute means the using the absolute direction, uh, absolute location. I mean, so I will use relative. So I just input input the ratio of lengths. After that, select element. So as you can see, the same same uh, load will uh, is assigned it to each element. But I selected line beam load type here, and I will input same value. And uh, define the define the line. Just clicking the start point and the end point, like this. And then you can see the apply the load here. So this is difference between the element beam load function and line beam load function. Okay. And uh, let's input the pressure load. So I think we I need the plate element. So we can create the plate element easily. I just used uh, used extrude function. So through this function, you can get the plate element from the from the frame type. So like this. So we got plate elements here, and move on to pressure load. So there is two types. One is define pressure load type, and one is the assign load type. So if you select the assign pressure loads, you can define the pressure load directly to plate elements or surface of solid element. So there is the load type. First of all, select the load type here, and then select the select the load type, and I selected a load case, and uh, input the load the input value for load, and and just select element, and click apply. And I will use define pressure load type to the to the various uh, pressure load to the same element. Okay. So first of all, input name of the load group, and uh, select the load case. Sorry. And there is two type for loads. The first one is first one is uniform, 
and second one is linear. So uniform mean that uniformly distribute uniformed fracture type but linear means you can we can control the uh, the load value for four point and click add to apply to define the pressure load and move on to the assign pressure loads again and there is the type in the pressure load so if you select load type you can see the load type we defined so here if you need more just click the dot 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 button you can define the more here and we just select element and click apply so we can see the applied pressure load type Okay, and uh, and the next one is the hydrostatic pressure. Uh, through this function, uh, we can define the triangularly uh, shape of pressure or non-uniformly shape the pressure more easier than the pressure load function so there are two types the curved load and the linear load so these function commonly used uh, commonly used for the soil pressure and hydrostatic uh, water pressure so let's try so first of all select the element type so we we have plate element now and uh, select the load direction so I will use the local jet so to check the local direction of element move on to the display function and here is element and you can see the under the element tab there is a local axis so if you click and apply there it will the local axis will be shown let's see so first of all select the, the direction of a, of, a, of a load the depth so I will choose I will select X direction and uh, select the reference level and info some value and select element after that click apply so you can see the applied load like this yeah the last one is plain load so uh, in the same manner as pressure loads we can define the several plain loads in advance and also we can define directly here so first of all define click the define load type so I prepare three load types the first one is point and second one is line distributed load type and third one is the pressure load type and move on to the assign plane load in the same manner we need to select the load case and under the load group name you can see the plane load type so there are three type will be three type we prepared so it, but if you need more just click this button and after that select the element type there are two type plate or solid and uh, this is the most important part of this function so loading place so we need to define the a plane to apply a load so the, to define the a plane we just click three three point so origin point and uh, 
click the second point to define the x direction and uh, click the third point to define the y axis and after that after that you can we can control the load direction and projection here and just click apply button so we can see the applied load so in the same manner we just change the load time and click apply and click apply so we we can see the three load type on the plate element using plane load type okay let's go back to the presentation So we saw various functions in statin loss function group in the previous slides and the demonstration. Now we will see application models with dead loading. The first application is about self-weight. Self-weight load can be used to the various st structure models. The major reaction of structures against self-weight load shows the deformation toward the direction of gravity as shown in the figures. The second application is about nodal loads. The nodal loads can be used to consider the weight of devices for construction. So the, the devices could be a daddy crane, a lift crane, and foam traveler, like this. So these are the foam traveler. The for instance, in this figure, the weight of foam travelers and eccentricity loading of foam travelers are considered as a nodal loads, like this. Here, nodal loads are applied in the transverse analysis for a con concrete box girder model. The nodal loads function is used to consider the vertical components of pre-stressing pre loading and the wind load on barrier. So these are the nodal load for each load case. And these example models are plate and solid, solid models for a pier. Nodal loads are considered to apply the weight of post structure to the top of a pier. So you can input the load using the nodal loads to, to the each node directly. And the third application is about beam and line element loads. In this example, beam loads are applied to glitch models for girder model. During construction stage analysis, beam loads are used to consider the weight of wet concrete for the slab on girders. And here, beam loads are used to consider wind loads on bridge. The wind loads are calculated individually, and it is applied using beam loads function. In this application, beam loads are used to consider additional dead loads such as barriers, pavement, and other attachments. Additional dead end loads can be applied individually to their location of, of a model or it can be applied as total value. So these are the summation summation value of dead load. In this case, uh, the dead load is applied it to the, it, the proper location. And next model is uh, covered with beam loads. Colbert is modeled with beam element as a unit length, 1 meter. Therefore, beam elements are applied to consider external loading. The external loadings such as soil pressure, water pressure, 
and live loads are applied using beam load functions. And this is last application models. It is the regarding pressure and uh, pressure, hydrostatic, and plane loads functions. These example models consist of plate elements and solid elements. The pressure loads are used to consider the weight of pavements, barriers, and additional attachments. And uh, if you have the solid element, I think the pressure load type it is load type would be the better way to input the load on the solid element to avoid the concentrated the stress or load results. And uh, these models are an integral bridge and a culvert that contains plate element. Here, hydrostatic pressure loads function is used to consider soil pressure and water pressure. The last model applies plane load function. This Gordon model has plate element. When messing this model, it doesn't consider loading location. Therefore, plane load function is used because Plane loads can be applied regardless of the location of nodes. So each figure show the loading state state for the each dead load case. Yeah. So we have looked into dead loads and related functions in my dashboard today. I think today's topic might be not that interesting for engineers who are familiar with FPM software because we had basic items. Our team will return with more advanced items later. So thank you for coming uh, again. I will give answers on the MyData Academy blog after this webinar. See you. Bye.